Gentlemen, concluded Napoleon, I will give you the same toast as before, but in a different form. Fill your glasses to the brim, gentlemen. This is my toast to the prosperity of Manor Farm. There was the same hearty cheer as before, and the mugs were empty to the dregs. But as the animals outside gazed at the scene, it seemed to them that something strange had happened. What was it that altered the faces of the pigs? Culver's old dim eyes flittered from one face to another. Some of them had five chins, some had four chins, some had three. But what was it that seemed to be melting and changing? Then the applause, having come to an end, the company took up their cards and continued the game that had been interrupted. And the animals crept away in silence. But they had not gone 20 yards when they stopped short and an uproar of voices was coming from the farmhouse. They rushed back and looked through the window again. Yes, a violent quarrel was in progress. There was shouting, banging on the table, sharp, suspicious glances, furious denials. The source of the trouble appeared to be that Napoleon and Mr. Pinkerton each played an ace of spades simultaneously. Ooh. Twelve voices were shouting in anger, and they were all alike. No question now what had happened to the faces of the pigs. The creatures outside looked from pig to man, and from man to pig, and from pig to man again. But it, it was already impossible to say which was which. Now if you read that and you don't get it, at this point in the game, and this, at this point, if you don't see what Orwell is talking about, what is it that causes the melting from one person, from the oppressor to the oppressed, from the oppressed to the oppressor and back and forth and back and forth, when the rulers all, when rulers rise, and separate themselves from the thing that they were trying to be separated from to save their people, what is it that causes it? It's the fucking money. It's money in politics, period. End of story. <laughs> Marcus County reporting. <clears throat> Getting all worked up early in the morning. Very passionate about this subject. Why? Because I don't know. Because democracy, it, 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 our, our democracy is in the balance. So, new anti-corruption legislation. You heard? Not so much legislation as a plan. Oh, there's a man among us who has a great plan. The one Bernie Sanders <coughs> has come up with a plan to rid our government of corruption. Now, the plan is, is it's, a, it's putting your finger on the problem and saying, here's the problem. Is money in politics the biggest problem in our nation, in our politics right now, in our economy, in our inability to pass a Green New Deal? Is it money in politics at the root of the problem? Absolutely. fucking -lutely. Absolutely. I don't know if that's a word. Absolutely, fucking lutely <laughs> It is. Right? Money. See, the politicians are supposed to represent the people. We have representatives. And we send those representatives to what we call Congress and the House of Representatives. And we elect a executive. We have the executive elect... Uh, judges we the people are supposed to decide but what has happened is corporations with big money have stepped in the way they've stepped in between us and democracy for their own gain line their pockets enrich themselves while everybody else suffers 
Okay. That's what's happening. That is the fundamental problem in this country. Everything else is secondary. And so let's look at let's look at what Bernie Sanders says about how he's calling it Bernie Sanders' new anti-corruption plan. Right, he put this out on Monday. One of the first things he talks about is is a very well-known fact that you must overturn Buckley v. Vallejo, a 1976 Supreme Court decision that ruled money is the same as constitutionally protected free speech. <laughs> money is speech. That's 1976, Buckley v. Vallejo. Money is speech. So, on that premise, whoever has the most money has the most free speech, right? Can you speak as loudly as ExxonMobil? <laughs> no. Can you speak at all? Can you speak at all? No. You're silent. Totally fucking silent. Well, ExxonMobil speaks. And Facebook and, and Google and all the big corporations speak for their own interest. And they say, oh, no, well, let's trickle down. We're going to, when we prosper, you prosper with us. Uh, uh, again, is that, there couldn't be a greater lie being told right now than that lie of trickle-down economics where corporations trickle down their prosperity to the little people. It doesn't fucking happen. Never did, maybe just for a moment, <coughs> when Reagan, uh, Reagan and uh, Greenspan proposed it, in the 80s, maybe for a little moment, it was a nice theory that worked for a hot minute. And then the corporations threw everybody under the bus for profit. So, so overturned Buckley v. Vallejo that says money uh, is the same as speech. Right? Overthrow that one. Now everybody looks to Citizens United that was passed in 2010. But that's just Buck Buckley Fuckley <laughs> v. B Vallejo on steroids. Citizens United. It's just an extension of the initial disastrous plan. And since 2000, uh, since 1976, much precedence has been created in the judicial system to justify money in politics. So it's a major upheaval. Right? I agree with that. We have to, um, we have to, um, to uh, flush out the bad laws and put in good laws that work for the people. I agree with that. Where I disagree is the severity to which we must treat the violators. I agree. I believe that the severity should be severe. <laughs> Real severe, real severe. In other words, I say, if someone breaks finance law after we pass this, not now, because they're trying to throw two of Trump's guys under the bus, saying, ah, oh, no, see, campaign finance law, look how bad they are. Meanwhile, they're all taking money. All the politicians that are pointing the finger are taking the money. Right? You have to make it severe and across the board. Money in politics is now illegal, and if you take the money and you sell out the people, you're guilty of treason. 30 years in a military prison. Severe. Make a couple examples, because once you make a few examples, it'll stop. It'll stop. So, but Bernie Sanders has a lighter touch. He says, scrap election, uh, the Federal Election Commission and replace it with something better. Yeah, okay. All right, I, I agree with that. All right? Ban corporate money a, uh, a, 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 in the Democratic Party convention. Well, yeah, you're banning money in politics, so you can cap the amount of contributions corporations can give to the event. That's money in politics, Bernie. That's the same thing. Right? Publicly financed elections. Again, this is big. I mean, this is, this is the whole shit right here, really. If you want a just system, 
if you want to drain the swamp, if you want to lock her up, if you want to, uh, you know, all these things that you want to happen in the country, if you're on the other side and you actually want free college tuition at city and state universities, if you want a government that can pass universal single-payer health care, if you want to decrease the military spending and, you know, and, and uh, eliminate the military industrial complex, this is how you do it. You flush out the current politicians, the money grabbers, you change the law, and if they break the law, any new people that come in, the House and Senate, treason, right? Severe penalty for violating those laws. Now everybody say, oh no, you can't reform the, the government, it's uh, run by Satanists. <laughs> uh, you can't reform it, it's, no, it's too far gone. <laughs> you think you're going to elect your way into something new and, 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 and you're going to save the, you're going to save the world, Conti, by, by uh, actually having elections that are free and fair and electing people that represent the people. That's what you're saying. Oh, how ridiculous is that? It's not ridiculous at all. It's not ridiculous at all. 535. Hello, squirrel. 535. 435. Squirrels run away when you come too close. 435 House. 100 Senate. One executive. That's all. You switch them out with people that are representing the people and not representing the money. And you lift, you lift the 99% out of abject poverty. I, I, I laughed the other day. Corporations are saying, oh, the minimum wage. Oh, no, see, the minimum wage is causing us to shut down plants and, and close storefronts because we can't pay. But meanwhile, they're still paying their executive branches millions and millions of dollars, right? Still paying the, the, the CEO, you know, 8 million, 12 million, 27 million. In the case of Bezos, billions of dollars. But you can't raise the minimum wage because they might have to take a pay cut. It, it's just ridiculous. All right, so, so what else is Bernie saying? A uh, lifetime ban on DNC chairs and co-chairs uh, from lobbying. Yeah, I, I agree with that, uh, of course, because this, that's the revolving door. They, they, they go into politics and they fuck everything up, like Debbie Wasserman Schultz and, and Donna Brazile, and then they turn around and they, uh, they, they start working for the media, or they work for a bank, or some other shit. Right? It's a revolving door of corruption, money, money corrupting politics. Um, did you know that 17 donors contributed three quarters of the money funding the 2016 DNC convention in Philadelphia? Two thirds of the money, I'm sorry, three quarters of the money, 75% of the money was corporate donors. Do you think you have a voice? You think you have a say? Right? They, if you were a Bernie Sanders supporter, they took, your, they took your seat. You got up to go to the bathroom and they took your seat. And they filled it with a, a Hillary Clinton troll. That's how powerful money is. You don't like it? Get the fuck out. That's what they tell you. Right? That's democracy? The politics... It's supposed to represent the people. That's the one place you're supposed to go as a public servant. To serve the people. Not get elected and serve yourself. It's not fucking self-serve. It's not fucking run for politics and then enrich yourself and buy yourself a condo and, and say, oh, well, it's just, uh, you know, it's just... That's just the, just the way shit is, you know? What are you going to do about it? I mean, right? That's, you know, we, we, we strive in politics. To, we, we strive in our careers to, to better ourselves. And, and I, I've risen to the highest level of what I do. So now I'm going to enrich myself. Like, in, like an Obama. Or the Clintons that are so fucking greedy. Money and politics. 
So of those donors, the 17 donors, uh, Bank of America, Comcast, uh, Facebook, even in, for Trump, all right, you say, oh, the DNC's polluted, but look at Trump. 2017 inauguration for Trump. The top contributors were AT&T, Boeing, uh, Bank of America, ExxonMobil, General Motors, Coke and Pepsi. That public financing of elections. That's how you stop it. Money in politics. That's how you stop it. A great man, Bernie Sanders, is saying it. Can he get it done? Well, I guarantee you that just like, just as, just as the corporations are lining up to bash Bernie, assholes in this thread are going to line up to bash Bernie, saying, ah, socialist, communist, socialist, too old, he had a heart attack, he owns three houses, he's a millionaire, his wife, his wife, his wife took money, <laughs> his wife took money from the corporation. So much bullshit, it's unbelievable, right? right? What else? What else? Constitutional amendment to overturn those two. Uh, oh, okay, so that's that's new. Constitutional amendment. Yeah, okay. Let's do it. Let's put it into the Constitution. That money in politics is illegal, right? As an amendment. I don't know what amendment, amendment it would be, but put it in there and constitutionally amend... Put an amendment into the Constitution, constitutional amendment, that says money in politics is is illegal. <laughs> make you happy? All right, we'll do it. All right, but again, you have to make the laws, the laws, Bernie, around it severe. Right. Tulsi Gabbard just said, "Oh, the elections are rigged." Well, that's good, but. You have to get the money out of politics. Unless you do that, none of this, none of the other shit will change. Congress stands in the way of all of this. It does. Because you can't get constitutional amendments. You can't get laws passed without a just uh, Congress that answers to the people. People like Nancy Pelosi should be hung. Literally. For treason, for being elect, for getting, for pretending to be for the people, running a campaign and then turning around and being for the corporations. It's treason, in my view. Uh, so, that's the number one thing. That's the number one takeaway. I hope that was helpful. As George Orwell tells us, we look from man to pig and from pig to man again. And it's impossible to tell which was which. See, if you look at Obama when he ran, right? Obama was of the people. He pretended to be of the people. And then the moment he got in, he was of the corporations. He sat at the table and played the same dirty game of cards. Pulling an ace out of his asshole. While the other guy pulled the same ace of spades out of his asshole. Right? Both cheaters. Right? That's what Orwell is telling us. That the politicians are all cheaters and liars. The pigs that were supposed to represent the animal farm are now sitting at the table with the very people that they were at war with earlier. Now they're at war with the people. Right? You see it? You see what's going on? You see what Orwell was telling us? So... Kudos to Bernie Sanders for making a bold statement to have an anti, anti uh, corruption plan in place. If Bernie Sanders is the nominee, uh, nominee, if the Democrats allow Bernie Sanders to be the Democratic nominee, Bernie Sanders will be the next president, and there is some hope, some possibility that this will get done. Because he's the only politician in history, in the 40 years of modern history, that doesn't take the corporate money. Yeah, he made a million dollars because he wrote a book. That's different, asshole. That's different, you fucking asshole. That's a guy who writes a book and makes a million dollars and buys himself a, a summer home. Right? 
he owns a house in Washington because that's where he does business and he has for 30 years. And he lives in Vermont, so he has a house. Big fucking deal. Are you comparing that to... Are you comparing that to ExxonMobil? And Jeff Bezos and guys that have billions and billions of dollars? Are you out of your fucking mind? Marcus Conti reporting.